Hi there, Doug Stuman with IT Creations. Today we'll be taking a look at the affordable yet powerful HPE ProLiant ML30 Gen 10 server. Apparently these single socket tower servers are very popular for small, remote, or branch office deployments. At least that's what they would have you believe. <laughs> Actually, I do believe that. Along with that single processor, and no, it's not a scalable processor, this system will support up to 64 gigabytes of memory. Let's take a look. It looks a lot like HP's other tower servers with an unmistakable design similarity to the interior of the Death Star. You know that scene when Obi-Wan shuts off the tractor beams for the entire moon-sized structure with just the flip of a switch? I just watched it again last night. It was so good. Anyways, system will support up to four SATA drives natively, plus an M.2 slot integrated with the system board to support your OS. It's lockable, won't take up much room, and I mean, if you plan on visiting Disneyland's Galaxy Edge Tour, he won't even need to break off a piece of Moss Eisley to take home because you'll have one of these babies. This has also been described as an Edge server. Maybe not a rugged Edge server like the HP EdgeLine 1000 we reviewed a few months ago, and you can see that here, but one that can support your far-flung office locations without connecting to the mothership for processing. On the front of the system, there's a removal bezel, a power on button, a USB 3.0 port on the left, USB 2.0 on the right, and a health status LED right next to the power button. The front bezel can be secured with a lock. Underneath you will see we have four 3.5 inch drive bays. Above that are two media bays for optional goodies, which we will get to in a moment. Another system configuration comes with eight 2.5 inch drive bays, and the HP Microserver Gen 10 is the next step down from the ML30, and is like a cute little bread box sized server at 32 gigabyte capacity. The next tower up is the ML110 Gen 10, which we reviewed a few weeks back, and that one does have Intel Xeon scalable processors. Are you interested in the HP ProLiant ML30 tower server? Because if you are, then for a limited time, you can save up to $250 off the price of a system listed on our site at $2,500 or more. That's right, just click that link, and when you're ready to make a purchase, just mention this video. Action figures not included. On the back of the system, starting at the top, there are two 80 plus platinum 500 watt power supplies with one for optional redundancy. Below that are several ports, including a VGA port, a serial port, four USB 3.0 ports, two NIC ports, and a dedicated management port to access the integrated lights out 5.0 module. Lastly, there are four PCI slots to support options. Security features on the back include a loop for a lock and a Kensington slot for a cable lock. A few more security features include HPE's silicone root of trust, protecting your firmware from attack which works with secure recovery to roll back to the last known good state after compromised code is discovered. Once we unscrew the thumb screws and remove the cover, you can see the motherboard and the single socket with four memory module slots to the side. Cooling of the PCI slots is accomplished by a lower fan pushing air through a plastic cowl. The upper portion has a fan at the back pulling air through the chassis and over the memory modules. A radial heat sink for the processor has an integrated fan. Processors supported on the system include the Intel Xeon E processors with two to six cores, but you can also use Intel Core i3 or Pentium processors. Pentium, I bet you haven't heard that term in a while. Depending on your choice of processors, memory speed will run at up to 2400 megahertz using Pentium or Core i3 CPUs, or up to 2666 megahertz when using the Intel Xeon E series processors. Our system came outfitted with a quad-core Intel Xeon E2134 processor with a TDP of 71 watts part of the Coffee Lake family of processors. I could use a cup of coffee right now. Only DDR4 ECC unbuffered memory modules are supported with each processor delivering two memory channels with a maximum of two UDIMs per channel. With all four slots loaded with 16 gigabyte memory modules, you can get a maximum of 64 gigabytes. The optional ILO port on the back of the chassis provides access to the integrated lights out module for at chassis and remote management of the system. The dedicated management port is optional and a cost savings for some applications. Clearly we don't have that one. That said, there are still ways to access the integrated management module using one of the integrated one gigabit ethernet ports in shared mode. It should be noted that only the advanced ILO license provides remote access and power metering of the system, plus a few other goodies. A new feature on this platform is HPE InfoSight. It's a cloud-based artificial intelligence predictive analytics tool to track and prevent potential problems with your network. Keep in mind, if you're just starting your new business, this feature and the remote access plus power metering is probably overkill and an added expense. There are four PCI 3.0 slots under the air shroud, with one by 16 mechanical slot that also has a by 16 electrical lane that connects directly to the CPU. The other slots may appear to be by 8 or by 16, but only support a by 4 electrical connection. A dedicated M.2 slot on the system board provides a by 2 electrical lane, which does strangle the performance a bit given the full speed is only realized with a by 4 connection, but still quite handy for a boot drive. 
The PCI slots can support a 12 gigabit per second SAS controller card, faster network card options, and even a graphics card for light AutoCAD and support of moderate graphics modeling and medical imaging. Supported computational and graphics accelerators include the NVIDIA P2000 and two AMD Radeon Pro cards, the WX4100 and the WX2100, but only one. All four of the 3.5-inch front-mounted drives can be connected to the integrated S100i controller. With the 8-bay 2.5-inch chassis, half the drives can be connected, but you will need a SAS HD RAID controller in one of those PCI lanes if you want to install all eight drives. Each of the two media bays will also support an optional non-hot plug HDD cage for one or two LFF drives, or you can install an optional optical drive in one of the media bays. As this is a remote server, you also might want to consider some kind of backup system. Supported software includes Windows Server, Linux, and HPE's proprietary Clear OS, which allows you to build that fully functional server through add-on modules from their application marketplace. As a remote branch office or edge server, the HP ProLine ML30 Gen 10 delivers some very impressive enterprise features at the very bottom of HPE's server tower line. It offers all the bells and whistles associated with the performance models just in smaller quantities. And for a business that's just starting out, it's pretty much all you'll need, at least for a little while. I will note that the biggest critique of this system is the cost of advanced ILO 5.0, which doesn't add a whole lot to the cost, but is a consideration. So there you have it. And just to remind you, IT Creations carries this server and many others. If you need processors, memory, storage, hard to find parts, and the highest performing GPUs on the market at competitive pricing, then check out IT Creations. If you have any comments on this or any other server, post them in the comments section below. And if you liked our review, hit that subscribe button to see more of the latest hardware. I'm Doug Stuman with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.